If you happen to watch my cleared out videos, you'll see that I have picked roughly 250 movies from my collection uh, to clear out. A lot of them were easy to pick, some were particularly hard. Uh, but now I have those movies, I now have the daunting task of deciding what's valuable and what I'm able to sell and what to do with the rest of the movies that aren't really worth much, um, which is probably going to be a charity shop or something like that. But being that I post the videos of me clearing out, being that I have friends that are, are collectors as well and talk to some of you guys online, I've had a couple of messages. Some people have asked me about, you know, are you really getting rid of this title? Is this something that you are uh, clearing out of? How much would you want for it? And it kind of led me down a path of self-sabotaging thoughts uh, within clearing out. You know, looking at these titles, particularly a friend contacted me who said, um, one of the titles I pulled out, are you getting rid of this? I'd buy that off you if you're getting rid of it. And instantly as a collector, my mind starts going to a crazy place. Hang on a minute, someone else wants this. If someone else wants it, do I really want to get rid of it? Because uh, it might be good, I, I, I may want that. And it's this whole psychological um, self-sabotage that I, I, I mentioned that just seems completely ludicrous to me. Now, I, I'm making a stand. If I've pulled it out of the collection to get rid of it, it's going away. If you make exceptions for one or two titles, yeah, it's a slippery slope of bringing them all back into the collection again and I, I refuse to do that. I've taken a step, I've pulled them out, I have to make them go. But it's the excuses that I am kind of fascinated by, fascinated by uh, as a collector when I go to purchase something, uh, when I think about getting rid of, rid of it. And it's these kind of self-sabotaging thoughts that I feel um, are really harmful to the collector, you know, when you're looking to buy something, the primary impulse should be, I want to see that. I want to buy that movie because I want to see the movie, I want to listen to the commentary, I want to read the booklet, whatever. It should be all about the film. I think a lot of times, particularly over the past maybe five years, as boutiques have become more apparent and more prevalent, it becomes, I want to get that before it sells out. Do you need it? Is that a movie you want to see? Are you only wanting it because of the perceived prestige of getting it? Um, which is something I'm trying to change my habit about, which is why I'm watching immediately, which I've been doing for a couple of years now, watch the movies as I get them. If I want to keep them, fine. If, I need, if I'm not happy with it, if it's not something I'm going to revisit, I need to move it on. And it's trying to almost change the mindset, change the, the habits that I've formed um, you know, change the, the silly excuses, you know, oh, things can be taken off streaming and I may not have access to that movie in 20 years time. Why would I want to hold on to a movie if I'm only going to watch it every 20 years? <laughs> That's a, an extreme example, but why do that? Uh, why would I want to keep a hold of a film that is, yeah, readily available? Anything uh, pretty much within the last 20 years seems to be available to stream almost anywhere, somewhere in the world. You know, I, I have access to various streaming platforms. I've got a VPN so I can tackle various con uh, countries as well and see uh, other people's uh, Netflix, other countries' Netflix or Primes or whatever and watch stuff there as well. It just, it's trying to break the mould of, of these little niggles and thoughts. So, I might like it later. It's a debilitating thought. It's sabotaging because it's given you that moment of doubt. You know, if I've had a title in my collection for 10 years, I've watched it once, what's the point in keeping it? You're looking at titles and I'm thinking, this isn't worth anything. Hey, I've got this movie um, and it's being sold in charity shops for a pound and, and it's not really worth anything. I may as well just keep it because it's not worth much. No. Again, buying in to the sabotage uh, of, you know, making excuses for yourself. If it's available in pound shops for a pound, then surely if I want to watch it a couple of years down the line, I can go into a charity shop and buy it for a pound rather than having it taking up space in my collection for absolutely no reason. 
one of the other things I think I'm really kind of hung on is the money and value of products. Is it worth money? Will it be worth more money later? Uh, particularly you have um, limited editions, you know, things for like Vinegar Syndrome, who have so many slip cases. And people love slip cases, rightfully so. I think they're stunning. I'm one of the people who would rather have a slip case than not, if I could. But a lot of people tend to say things like, I'm going to keep hold of that until it sells out, then it'll be worth more and I can flip it then. Does that day ever come? Do we ever get to the point where we're like, yes, finally this is sold out, now I can sell it for three million and, re and retire. It's unrealistic and you're keeping things, uh, you're making an excuse to keep it again, or I do. These are all things that I've done to, to hinder myself um, in my collecting. I, I it doesn't matter if something's going to go up in price, really. If I can get back the money I paid for something, that's a win. I've got to experience it, I've got to check it out, and I get my money back, and it goes on to someone who may treasure it more than I obviously do. And um, it's just a daunting task having pulled out these movies and now looking at them and hearing various thoughts and, and people going, oh, I can't believe you removed that and having that little sting of regret in the back of my head going like, do I really want to remove that from the collection? Obviously I did. This is a, a process that I'm working through, a step-by-step -step self help almost to break free uh, the confines and moulds of that hoarding and gathering mentality that I had rather than the curating uh, mentality that I, I should have. Um, yeah, which is, it, it seems to be in stages, you know, like I was terrified about the, the removing titles from my collection, but finally sitting down to do it, it became more free flowing. It became easier as I went through it. Um, I think it's something that I may do every year, just go through the full collection and preen um, things that I haven't watched or in a while or suddenly don't have that interest to go back and check out at any time soon. But now I've conquered that step, I'm on to the next step, valuing, clearing out, actually getting rid of the things. Pulling it from the collection is a good step. Now it's important to get it on to the next step, to get it advertised on eBay, uh, to figure out a, a, a Facebook group if it's worth doing, to actually start posting and sending these things away, to get money from it. And I think that's going to be the key. Once I start getting money from these titles, once I realise that they do have a resale value rather than just that perceived value and actually get physical cash for it, it may make things much easier to push on as quick as I can. But just now, I feel as if I'm dragging my feet a little bit, um, which is why I'm really glad I've got this channel and I've got this output to talk to you people about um, who seem to be in similar boats or who are further on than I, like where I want to be. Um, but it just feels like step by step, I'm hitting these little hurdles that I didn't knew, didn't know existed. You know, the, the sting of regret that, 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 that last ditch attempt to try and cling on to something that I don't necessarily want, but I, my mind is trying to find any rationale whatsoever to keep it. But I'm going to be strong on this one. I'm not going to let that little sting uh, rob me of the motivation that I have to move forward. And talking about it is definitely going to help. I, I wasn't expecting this. This was an unexpected little twist uh, in, in the collecting 2.0, but one that I'm kind of happy to have conquered almost or getting to conquer. Um, and, and no doubt I'll be back whenever I hit the next kind of hurdle. Something that kind of stops me from wanting to clear out or, or, or move on or looking at more excuses um, that's going to happen along my kind of journey of, of trying to rewire my brain which hopefully turns out okay. So there we have it, the sting of regret, the the, the idea and excuses that, that we try to use to delude ourselves into thinking that we need something when really we don't. Thanks for listening to me ramble about this again, uh, this, this little niggle that I had in my head. As always, 
Um, there's more content up here you want to see more of my stuff hit the like button if you like this kind of content because it knows you know, make more whenever I have something to actually say about it as always you can join me on the Patreon or the membership programme for as little as 99p a month which trust me is going to help me get new setup and camera along with some of the money I sell from movies uh, to better uh, do production on my channel thanks for watching and I'll see you next time